Welcome to this week's episode of Biz Success in 15, where top experts share hot tips and strategies that you can implement in as little as 15 minutes to build your dream business. And now here's your host, the visibility whiz, Cindy J. Hi, I'm Cindy J, the Visibility Wiz, and welcome to this episode of Biz Success in 15, where top experts share hot tips and strategies for you to build your business that you can implement in 15 minutes or less. Today, our guest is Cornelia Ward, also known as Connie, and Connie <laughs> is a divine career and business coach and author. Connie works with light workers to create a transition plan into a business that really lights them up so that they're excited to get back to work on Monday. And she does this by helping spiritual entrepreneurs be a force for good in the world as they bring in a steady flow of new clients. Welcome, Connie. It's a pleasure to have you. So fun to be here, Cindy. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and to begin with, can you share a personal or business challenge that you had to overcome in order to achieve your level of success? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, so I, my story is a little bit of a crash and burn story, if you will. I, until about 10 years ago when I started my business, until 10 years ago, I was a broker in financial services and I loved working with my clients. I actually worked with a lot of clients who were business owners, which is what I do now as well. And so that was a great precursor to what I do now. But what was happening when I was in financial services is that my personal values no longer aligned with the personal values of those around me and my work environment. And so what often happens in that situation is that that can cause a lot of stress because you wake up Monday morning or every morning you go to work and you feel like you're leaving the real you at home. And so... Uh, what happened to me is I ended up getting really, really sick. You know, when we are under a lot of stress, whatever it's caused by in a work situation, it typically causes health issues. So the, the stress for me actually manifested as depression. And, I, and I'm like such a healthy person. And I got totally depressed when I was kind of at the end of this kind of gig with, you know, working in financial services. And so what ended up happening is I tried working half time for a while, that didn't work. And so it was just really clear the writing was on the wall and I needed to leave this job. And so that's what I did, but I was so sick, I couldn't work for months. And so during that time, while I was recovering, because I knew I wanted to start a business. And of course, you have to have a certain bandwidth, right? To have a successful business. And so uh, that first few months, my, my next job actually was self-care and getting myself my health back. Right. Um, and so that's kind of the beginning of my journey. And this all happened right in the middle of a financial crisis. And so I was learning all sorts of things because I'm a big learner, like I'm sure a lot of, a lot of people are who, who watch your podcast. And I was learning how to create a life coaching business. Mm -hmm. And the strategies that I was learning weren't working. Nothing was working. And it's um, anybody who's you know, been around or was around during that time probably remembers there was, there was not only we were going through this great recession financially, right? But there was also really what I found was a huge shift around the strategies that used to work to get the clients you wanted as a new business owner. And then there were, it, they just weren't working any longer. And so uh, what I had to do, cause I couldn't go back to work. I had gotten so sick working for other people. I, you know, I really wanted this business. And so what I ended up doing is having to create my own system. And I have a system that I teach to my own clients, spiritual entrepreneurs, coaches, healers, and intuitives, for example. And it's basically passion and purpose in business, 10 steps to bring in a steady flow of clients in your business. And what's really fun and where the turnaround was for me, Cindy, was when I learned this strategy of using Meetup to bring in a flood of clients in my business. And so the turnaround was my first workshop was how to find your life purpose so you can create a career you love. And like 15 people showed up, five were already clients, and out of the 10 people left, and it, by the way, I live in a really small community, so this works like I'm in Vermont, where they say there are more cows than people in Vermont, right. so really small community. And even with those small numbers, I enrolled 
of the people who are not yet my clients from that group. And from one two hour workshop, I made like $8,000. So that for me was like, I love to teach. I just want to help people. I don't want people to struggle in business the way I did. And so I love to teach people that meetup strategy because it was such a turnaround for me. And I know that's what we're going to be talking about is meetup uh, because it, it is a wonderful strategy. But I sort of want to go back to something that you had said is that you didn't feel like you were being real when you were going to work. And I think that that's so many people struggle with that. So thank you for sharing that. Um, because even whenever you started your business, it sounded like you were sort of still finding your unique self and your unique mm -hmm. voice, right? Because I think that's the most important thing to having a successful business is being true to you because naturally you're going to get depressed if you're trying to be somebody mm -hmm. you're not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And why, and you know, part of the joy of having a business is to be able mm -hmm. to create whoever you want to be within the context of that business and it also enables you to be really creative around bringing all your unique qualities like i you know i um i have this really strong business background i have a master's in economic development i used to be a broker in financial services and then on the intuitive side you know i'm actually able to kind of connect to people's divine teams so that i can share with them you know, the information that's, that I'm getting to share with them, to help them in their business or when it comes to their life purpose. So it's, so it's a really fun way for you to be uniquely you, who you are, embrace all of your experiences and the resources you have to bear. And then, and then you, you, you get to play and, and you express play. Yeah. In all these different ways. Yeah. Yeah. I love that to get to play. And so moving on to meet up, Mm -hmm. um, I know it seems like everybody should know what Meetup is, but I've spoken to lots of people who have no idea what it is. So that's can you really explain good. what Meetup is? Yeah, that's a great question. So Meetup.com, and it might be Meetup.org. I can't remember which, but it's Meetup.com. They say that I always log on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. So, um, so that it's a website. Okay, and it's I guess it's technically a social media platform but think of it as in-person social media, right? In-person social interaction. So basically what Meetup does is they, in any community, and they're all over the world, any community in any place in the world, there are people who host gatherings. It could be on hiking, it could be on you know, meditation, it could be on emotional freedom technique, it could be, you know, just a, a business, small business networking group. It could be mom entrepreneurs or moms who, you know, are looking for the next step, that kind of thing. Um, and so, so the way I've used Meetup is as an entrepreneur is to offer topics like how to find your life purpose so you can create a career or business you love. Example would be the, an example of, um, of a meeting, but it's basically an opportunity for people to get together in person. And, you know, I mean, Cindy, you and I, I'm sure, and many people watching have been to many in-person workshops yes. or just events of some kind. And there's these amazing transformations that happen for people. And that's mm -hmm. part of the magic of, the strategy that I teach is the transformation and being able to continue that conversation with people so that you can continue to help them on their journey as, you know, someone that they would, they would hire. Right. And I know you said that you're in a small town, so it's anywhere. And this has been one of my even drawbacks. I'm like, should I or shouldn't I? Should I or shouldn't I? So I keep mm -hmm. going back and forth uh, with whether I want to implement what I've learned from you. Mm -hmm. And because I live in a very small town as well, um, and there's, uh, I live 90 miles from any other town. So whoever would come to my meetup has to live in my town. Mm -hmm. But my town also, there's a, um, a military installment here but it's not enlisted people, it's where they test, um, it's a testing facility. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of rocket scientists, you know, think like Edwards Air Force Base. There's a lot of rocket scientists and, and really these, these brainy type people that live here. So I, so I have this limiting belief myself, like, hey, nobody's gonna wanna come and listen to me talk about, like, mine would be very similar. Hey, what's your life purpose or living your purpose or how to, how to live a happy life, right? Utilizing the law of attraction. I'm not quite 
uh, don't believe that my business coaching would work in this town simply because you either work on base or you know you work for Walmart basically there's just not a lot of uh, there are some business owners here mm -hmm. but not mm -hmm. not a lot of internet based business owners let's mm -hmm. say well I'll share a secret with you <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Here's the solution. The solution is that for every in-person meetup, mm -hmm. you can have a virtual meetup. So you could be meeting on Zoom. You could meet on mm -hmm. Skype. Okay. Whatever you're even, you know, freeconference.com, right? If people right. want to do audio. So for every in-person one, you can have one online. And so here's, here's the strategy. Okay. You live in a little town or just not very many people are going to show up. You, what you do is, um, and hopefully no, nobody from meetup is listening, but it, this is all above board, but basically just hold a meetup even in your home, right? In your home, in your living room. I used to do them in like my living room all the time at a local, you know, wherever library, cafe, church, whatever it is, there's your in-person meetup. Okay. And, and maybe one person shows up, maybe nobody shows up, but basically on your meetup in your meetup group where your, your meeting is announced, you, you basically, you've had your in-person meetup. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then just bring some busy work with you, right? Like if it's at a library and people don't show up, right. Then just bring some busy work. So it's not lost time as an entrepreneur. So there's your one in-person one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and schedule. Um, the go ahead and schedule a virtual one. Okay? okay. So you can mail to your list. People can be anywhere. You can buy, invite people from your Facebook group. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, what was the other piece I was going to say about? Oh yeah. So the other way you can save time with that, Cindy, is um, let's say you do one on how to find your life purpose so you can create a business you love through the law of attraction, let's say. Okay. And you do one in person. Let's say it's December 10th. Okay. And then you do your virtual one on December 17th, make them on the same topic. And then you don't have to prepare for more than one talk. Right. And people who couldn't show up for the in-person one on the 10th, maybe they can show up for the one on the 17th and they're interested in that topic. So that's the way to kind of meet that requirement. But virtual is definitely, that's a, that's an open door. That's an opportunity for people to be able to do that as well. Now, I know when I log on to Meetup for my town, when I put in my zip code, there's two meetups that show up. One, okay. one is a hiking club and the other one is Toastmasters. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and what, uh, but one time whenever I logged on, I know it said, I don't know, I was looking for something more spiritual, woo woo. And it said like, I think if I recall correctly, something like 125 people are interested in this subject. So if I were to create something online to those subjects, how would I be able to notify those people? So when you go to set up your group, you pick the themes, right? Like you were just talking about. And then you go ahead and create your group, okay? And it'll go out to, to what I call meetup land to get approved. Hmm. And while you're waiting for it to be approved, you go ahead and get your meetup, your first meetup in there. So when mm -hmm. it's announced, the meetings in there and people can see and they can RSVP. So that's a great way to get people more, more people to your meeting. And then when meetup approves the group, they're going to send a mass email out to people in your geographic area based on, they're going to do a matchmaking, right? They're going to match make the themes that you set up for your group along with the themes that people who are living in your area, who, want to go to meetups, what they're interested in. Does that answer your question? That does answer my question, yes. So meetup does, will send it out for me if I have it set up correctly. Yeah, I mean, you do, <laughs> you know, as, so here's the thing. I mean, you mentioned like, right, there's a meetup in your area that's on hiking, okay? So um, when you have, and this is the, one of the things that, that I teach actually is, when you are a business owner and you are creating your meetup group to support you in serving more people in your business, you do need to follow the meetup guidelines. Mm -hmm. 
So when you, when you, um, when you write your description of the group, when you're setting up your group and you're writing your description, just make sure you, and you know, look at their mission statement, right? Look at what their purpose is. It's around connectivity, building relationships, you know, a bunch of collaboration just, and you know, obviously you want to be truthful, right? But, and this, this is probably a, it's a good idea for you to have this be part of your group anyway, but, but when you include that that's your purpose of the connecting with other people, being of service, and it's not about, well, I'm going to sell my product or my service at the meetup. That's a big no-no. Okay. And, and with anything, with business in general, you're going to do so much more whenever you're asking yourself, how can I be of service and step out of the what's in it for me? It's how can I be of service? How am I fulfilling my life purpose? You know, my life purpose is to teach and to help and guide others. I get my biggest high whenever I'm helping somebody, which I'm sure you do too. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, and, and so if that's how you approach it, mm -hmm. right, people are, they're going to want to spend more time with you if you're being of service. Like if, you know, like uh, if you have a meetup on six steps to create a career you love or 10 steps to create a business you love. Mm -hmm. You know, people are going to walk away with what those steps are and you're going to have provided a huge service to mm -hmm. them. And then when you invite people at the end to connect with you and to, you know, schedule maybe a one-to-one -one conversation to see if you can help them out, you know, you've already, you've already really solidified that relationship and it's pretty clear you're coming from a place of service. So I totally agree with that is mm -hmm. coming from a place of service. But you know what else I wanted to mention to you? You in your town, and maybe this is true for other people too, like a little town and there's only a couple of meetups. Um, your other meetup is on Toastmasters, right? There's a Toastmasters meetup? Okay. Yeah. So, and it's probably not the only one, right? There are probably dozens and hundreds and thousands right. of Toastmasters meetup groups, right? Well, you know what's interesting though, in my town, like I said, I'm literally 90 miles from anywhere. Yeah. Um, and because it's all desert and the government owns all the desert that surrounds me. So uh, there's two Toastmaster groups. One of them is on base, and they don't uh, they don't advertise themselves. The other one that's off of base is the one that's in meetup. Okay, so yeah, that Toastmaster makes sense. Because yeah. the one the one that's on base probably doesn't need any kind of help getting people to their meetings. I suspect, right? Because it's all right. Because that, yeah, because it's all meeting. yeah. Yeah. So what you could do, the one that's off base, what you could do, well, that's the meetup, right? The one that's off base is the yes. meetup. And so, you know, who goes to Toastmasters? People who want to speak and they want to learn to speak. A lot of business owners probably, like you are, in other words, your market might be the people in that Toastmaster group. So what you can do is you can trade stages, if you will, with the organizer of the Toastmasters meetup group. And you can basically, and that, that way you can leverage not just your own group, but you can also speak at their meetup and offer for them to speak at yours. And that's a great way for you to get more exposure from other people's meetup groups, actually. That's, yeah. And I can see, especially if you live in a town that has more than two meetups, where you can really utilize that strategy. Uh, and start well, and, th and, well yeah. and think about it too like vir even virtual meetups right like a meetup could be anywhere and you could you could speak to somebody else's virtual meetup and it doesn't matter where you were either of you were located right which is similar to what we're doing now the podcast or yeah. a summit yeah. or yeah there's so many things that we do where we're talking to other people yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's another fun way to be creative yes okay and um so what would you say really quickly what would be like the steps to have a successful meetup i mean we don't have a lot long time and i know you could talk for hours about it <laughs> yeah yeah so so the first thing i would say is when um you create your meetup group you want the name of the group to be aligned with the result you can help your clients with right? So my meetup group, I think was called Life Purpose Seekers, right? Or I had another group, Heart Centered Entrepreneur. So it's a description of the people that you can help and what they're looking for. Um, and the second thing is that when you go create 
your meetup topics, the actual meeting topics, you want that also to be aligned. And so, you know, like, like in our business, like my business, you know, my, if you, we think of a business as a, an umbrella, you know, I help spiritual entrepreneurs bring in a steady flow of new clients. Right. And so that's my thing. That's my business. And so I want the names of all my meetup groups to be aligned with that problem, right. That I help people with. And then the next layer down is the names of the actual meetings and you want those to be aligned. Like I just spoke to someone this morning who has a business as a healer working with horses and their meetup was about, you know, how to use horses for healing as opposed to, you know, five steps to, um, you know, five steps to overcoming chronic illness right. and have one of those five be by the way, horses, there's a healing process with horses. So that would yeah. be how they would tuck in their purpose and what they're hoping to enroll clients in. Um, and so you want the name of your meeting to be how to do this, right? So that you can do that. So how to find your life purpose so you can create a career you love would be an example right. of that. Um, and then the other thing is that's so key. This is like huge is you never, at least if you're following the guidelines that I recommend, you never want to charge for your meetups. You oh, don't okay. want to charge people. That's what in marketing we call a barrier to entry, right? Mm -hmm. Like you want, you want people to show up and not to have to have an excuse for not coming. You just want people to show up so you make them free. That is so important. Okay, very good. That was going to be my next question. If you charge for them, you have read my mind. <laughs> We were talking about strategies. Do you have another strategy that you think business owners can use to build their business in 15 minutes or less? Yeah, you know, um, this might be like 15 minutes a day or less. Um, and it kind of goes back to my crash and burn story. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's really, self-care is really important as an entrepreneur. And so whatever that looks like for you, whether that's getting enough sleep, um, getting plenty of exercise, getting outside, you know, having fun. So you're not like just working yourself into the ground. So, uh, so for example, this meetup strategy I just taught, it's one of the 10 steps I teach to bring in a steady flow of clients. But the first step is actually self care, because if you don't build that strong foundation, I think it's a showstopper when it comes to having a successful business. If you don't have a really solid foundation of self-care so that you have the bandwidth right so that you can get those inspired ideas so that you can you know reach your goals more quickly because you've got more you've got more energy you feel good okay great and i completely agree with you yeah self-care should always be number one and i know that you have a wonderful gift for our listeners can you share mm -hmm. what that is yeah i'm actually hosting a free challenge and it's called get clients from meetup and I know I just gave you three top things, right? Around the topic, the group topic, the meeting topic, the fact that it's free, the meetups are free. But this challenge, what it will do, it's over five days and it'll show you, I'm, like I walk with you step by step. It's, it's as if I'm looking over your shoulder and showing you, okay, so here's what you do to set up your profile. Here's what you do to create your group. Don't forget to do this, but it's small, small steps each day. And the idea is for you to have your group and your first meeting set up before the end of the five days so that you're ready to go off and enroll clients. I love it. And I know I had intended, attended one of your challenges and they're absolutely great. You give so much information. So to our listeners, you definitely want to head on over to bizsuccessin15.com forward slash Connie. That's all lowercase C-O-N-N-I-E and grab, you know, sign up for this free five-day meetup challenge because this way you're setting up your meetup correctly. So Connie, do you have any parting words for our listeners? Yeah, the one thing I would say is that the work you're meant to do out there in the world is so needed and fear comes up a lot for those of us who are entrepreneurs those of us who you know want to do the work that our soul is basically calling us to do and just remember there are people out there projects you know 
situations out there that are really calling for your unique set of tools and gifts to be applied to help to make the world a better place. And it's just so important for each of us, I think, to get out there and do the work we're meant to do in the world. This world really, um, you know, often we see we get overwhelmed with what's going on now out there in the world, either locally or, you know, even on a, a universal level. But we, if we just bring it down to us ourselves and whether, you know, whether we are fulfilling the work we're meant to do and making the world a better place, that can just be a huge way to f have a really fulfilling life, have a very, you know, lucrative career. And at the same time, you know, feel like you're making a difference in the world and make, the, you know, make, make a positive difference in the world, be that positive force in the world. I love that. Yes, be the positive force in the world. And to our listeners, if you enjoyed today's show, you want to head on over, as I said, to bizsuccessin15.com forward slash Connie, and you're going to find any links from today's show, including a meetup link. You'll also be able to re-listen to Connie's words of wisdom to catch some of the gems that you might have missed. You can download it and catch up on any past episodes. And while you're there, you definitely want to be sure that you sign up for the free five-day challenge, Get Clients from Meetup. Uh, thank you for being my guest today, Connie. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Cindy, and good luck to everybody. Okay. Big hugs, and be sure to tune in next week for another episode of This Success in 15 and another top expert. Have a great week. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Biz Success in 15. For all links mentioned in today's show and to watch or listen to previous episodes, visit bizsuccessin15.com. Thanks so much for listening and be sure to tune in next week for another amazing guest. Mm -hmm.